My first point is regarding the presentation of the budget statements. I raised this in my speech. Will the finance minister consider presenting uh, one or two pages in future budget statements which presents the budget according to IMF uh, guidelines uh, reflecting the total net amounts of money leaving the economy to the state and money that the state is pumping in back into the economy so that Singaporeans can make a, a well-informed assessment of whether future budgets are expansionary enough so that that would facilitate genuine uh, democratic consensus formation. Uh, secondly, I'd just like to uh, refer back to the net births of companies uh, statistic that I cited in my speech and ask the minister whether, uh, uh, what is the minister's evaluation of the state of the SME sector? Because I highlighted that the net births of companies have been plunging in 2016. The last time we saw such a figure was uh, 2009. And the, the last point is really I just wanted to ask the finance minister again about the uh, timing of the price hikes uh, that we have seen. Uh, I think as other members have alluded to, the government did have the option of either pre-announcing you know, some of these price hikes and or phasing them or staggering them and or deferring them. Uh, mm -hmm. So given that there have been four price hikes, gas, water, electricity and parking, you know, all within the space of three months at a time when GDP growth is uh, the lowest it has been since 2009, uh, job seekers outnumber job vacancies and so on. You know, um, can, can, and, and, and given that the government has shared that the reasons behind this are not political, and I believe that uh, that was shared yesterday, can the minister help us, help Singaporeans understand a little better what are the uh, non-political reasons behind you know, timing these price, price hikes in this way? Thank you. Well, I thank Mr. Leon Pereira for your question. First on your, you know, whether the data that you asked for uh, as prescribed in the IMF format, is it available? In fact, it is. And if you actually access the IMF website, you'll find that our numbers are there, right? because we submit these numbers also to the IMF. The reason why the budget book is presented this way is that this meets our specific needs, because we, have, we need to know, particular ministries, how much spending there is available, what is the development spending, what is the operating spending, whereas the IMF is for a macroeconomic evaluation, it, it serves a different purpose. Now, as to whether um, a particular budget is expansionary or not expansionary, in fact, it's not just by looking at those numbers. Um, I think if you consult the economists, you'll know that they actually take great pains to model the effects of the monetary and fiscal policy, and in the case of the fiscal policy, how much of a fiscal impulse a particular budget uh, provides to the economy. And here we are fortunate that you know, the MES would do some of these simulations to give us a sense of whether it is appropriate or it's not appropriate. Because we also have an important objective of keeping inflation in check. So the, these are not numbers that are not available or, or numbers that you uh, can just read off and uh, conclude that it is expansionary or not expansionary. It takes a general equilibrium model for us to look at some of this impact. Now, your next question on the net worth of uh, companies, whether is it an indication that companies are not doing well? In fact, there are many reasons behind uh, the birth rates and, and the exit rates of companies, and that we must expect that you will fluctuate uh, over, over cycles, depending on the economic conditions and so on. So again, the, uh, I think Minister Iswaran has explained about, you know, a, if we are looking at the health of SMEs, there is a broad range of factors that one has to look into. And if your specific question is, are uh, SMEs doing okay? As I've indicated in both my budget speech and in a roundup, that the performances across sectors, across industries, across firms differ. And that is why we need a targeted approach. You know? And that's why I use the Chinese phrase, tui chen xia yao, you know, to have the right remedy for the right ailment. It's not a case of a broad, broad base that every firm is doing badly and therefore we need a big rescue operation like as we had during the global financial crisis. So those things will have to be carefully studied and we cannot just draw uh, a simplistic conclusion that just a number of firms are formed this year, that year, and therefore the situation is better or worse. Your final question on the timing of the increase The fact is, first and foremost, do, do we agree that 
the price signal is important and that we do not, it's important so that consumers know what the actual uh, cost of the resource is and therefore can then take action to mitigate the use. If the answer is yes, then there's never a good time, right? Because I don't think any finance minister finds it a popular thing to come here and say, oh, I'm going to increase this, I'm going to increase that. It's never. And uh, I don't take great joy out of announcing all these increases. But the fact is, we have to do the right and responsible thing. The right and responsible thing is to make sure that the price signal and the correct price fits through to the economy early enough and that if we do things early, often we also have the ability to provide a uh, mitigation package, a support package, and which is what we have done, whether it's for diesel duty, whether it is for uh, um, water, you know, whether it's it increases in use safe rebate. So I think this is a fundamental point that we got to make sure that we do things correctly, we have the right price signal, and that every one of us factor this into our decision-making and do our part.